Hey everybody, it's Scott Hollingsworth with Viral Marketing, and I want to welcome you to our first episode of Bullseye Hiring Hangout. And we're in partnership with the System Success. We've got both hosts uh, joining us today, Jolene McDonough and Kathleen Metcalf, and we've got a great guest for you. We're going to be talking about how to bridge the communication gap between top producers and top assistants. So, Kathleen and Jolene, if you want to explain a little bit more about what we're going to be talking about and introduce everybody to our guest, go ahead and do that now. Thanks, Scott. I appreciate it. And thanks to get to Viral Marketing. You guys do such a great job, you know, assisting us and getting in publishing this and putting this out. So thank you to you and to Frank. So and getting us online. <laughs> so, thanks. so I'm Jolene McDonough. I am the founder of System Success. And Kathleen Metcalf from uh, Bullseye Hiring is here. We are collaborating in the Bullseye Hiring and the hiring and training of assistants. Uh, for top producers around the country. So that's our latest project we're real excited about. Uh, great collaboration. I'm excited to be working with Kathleen. And um, the intention of the call really, or of our meeting today, really is about um, how to bridge that gap of communication between really experienced and really top assistants and top agents. And how to actually have that go smoother as we get busier and busier in the real estate market. So we've invited John Pike from Talent Genius. Um, thanks for joining us, John. Or I had a great conversation with you the other day and just amazed at the knowledge that you bring in understanding what has a top agent be successful. So thank you. My uh, pleasure. So, so you know, John's going to be talking about you know the his knowledge of the communication between the two and what works, what doesn't work. And so I guess we're going to dispel some of the frustrations or we're gonna, the myths about what really goes on in that communication piece, what the block, you know, what, what are those blocks to having good communication and why maybe assistants have a blank stare of, I don't have no idea what you're talking about or you're giving me more of that stuff, more stuff, to do when I haven't even finished what I've already done. So I'll stop talking now and I'll turn it over to Kathleen. Um, so thanks for joining us everybody and we'll, we'll move on. Kathleen. Thank you. John, it's so nice to meet you. I've seen uh, your website and watched some of your videos and have a lot of respect for the work that you do. Thank you Kathleen. And um, when Jolene and I have been collaborating between her uh, work in real estate and in um, in such an operations and system success quite literally and then my background in uh, recruiting hiring being a real estate assistant myself working for a top producer and also uh, having been an agent my work in bullseye hiring um, now Jolene and I are both uh, in uh, is not only hiring the right person but then getting them to be successful so that team communication and it is most typical that the agents want to hire us because that's not their expertise. They're great salespeople and they become managers sort of by accident because they got so great at sales. So they have more volume, so now they need help and their hiring skills uh, is not what they've been developing. So they come to us, they come to you. And uh, it's in the communication where how they're interviewing, how they're delegating, how they're following up, because they're not really supposed to hire in their own image, which means now they're in a team with all these different personalities that they don't relate to, where the deer in headlights look comes, where you know the assistant is overwhelmed, uh, but the agent needs to be their best. So we really are looking for you to share with our audience, both for the agents as well as for the existing assistants and those that want to be assistants. And goodness knows we need more people to want to be top producing assistants uh, because the demand for that job is high and there's wonderful career opportunity. But we really need to help them be prepared for what it's like to work for a really top producing agent and be successful because hit the pavement running was a, an expression invented for this situation uh, because the top producers are already at that level of production and success by the time the assistant uh, has their first day on the job. So if you could tell us a little bit about your experience with how top producers think and what they look for in their assistant that works with them. Sure. Well, um, 
be, one of the first things that you need to consider that anyone needs to consider is that there really truly is strength in diversity. So you're looking at two completely opposite personality types, okay? And it's intended or designed, it's essential that they be opposite. So that's the thing. In order for true success to take place, they have to be basically the opposite. Now, that creates a lot of conflict or potential for conflict. So when we're, when we're looking at a top producing agent, we're typically looking at someone who has a higher sense of urgency, who's less patient, who is more driven and determined and competitive, and uh, they also are extremely money motivated and achievement oriented. And so that sense of urgency is something that um, is really one of the hallmarks of a great salesperson. Now, because they have a sense of urgency, most of the time, to the horror of the administrative person, <laughs> they do not have the detail orientation. They do not have you know, the, the gift of being thorough and precise and organized. And so what happens is, the reason why the admin person is just absolutely crucial is because as far as handling the details and making sure everything is accurate, um, they're absolutely indispensable because their personality style is such that being thorough, precise, and detailed, and analytical, and being able to, you know, solve problems quickly and paying attention and so forth to, you know, not making mistakes, um, is basically where where their strength resides. Now, the admin person is often going to be saying, you know, you only filled out 80% of the information, or you're missing this piece of information, or I didn't get it in a timely fashion. That is perhaps the single most prominent dialogue or area of challenge that takes place. The admin needs all of the information and in a timely fashion to get everything processed. The salesperson is flowing and you know out there going at a high velocity and really is not nearly as detailed. Now, they don't do that, and I'm speaking for myself as well. I'm a 10 on the C score. Okay, so when it comes to detail orientation, um, that's not me. Now. I am a 99D and a 99I, to put it in contrast. <laughs> so anyone that knows anything about the personality styles knows that you're typically above 50 in two of the, pro, uh, two of the four dimensions and below 50 in the other two. So you're dominant in two and you're understated in two. So that's why the both sets of uh, admin people are very, very essential for accuracy, for precision, for detail. But the salespeople are also, you know, indispensable as well as far as actually, you know, closing the business so that we can get to the paperwork stage. Thank you. So one of the questions um, that I have is around the topic of versatility. So salespeople learn versatility so that they can sell to different kinds of clients and customers, right? So in managing a team as an agent, there's a versatility of management style. And then as an assistant, there is also the versatility not only to work with the different clients that the agent has brought in, but to work with this different personality style, who's your boss, from you. So could you talk a little bit about um, sticking with your primary style and gaining versatility uh, in working as a team and sort of how people break out of you know something more narrow where they just stay with their two strengths where they actually gain more flexibility to work with different personalities. Well I think perhaps the single greatest or most important theme that I'd like to emphasize is uh, a concept by uh, called self-awareness. Okay now the Center for Creative Leadership is one of the top five leadership companies mm. in the world annually okay and they they have you know repeatedly said that the foundation of all learning personal development and growth is self awareness so in other words if you don't know what you don't know you're powerless to do anything about it right so the more insight and self knowledge we have about who we are our style the more effective we are going to be when it comes to communicating with anyone else okay so interestingly we did a, a scientific research study. It took, us ab it took us seven years, believe it or not, and we did this research study with over 200,000 people in 23 different countries. Every role, every position, every industry was a monumental task. 
And what we found is that the consistent high performers, which were only 9%, by the way, and success or um, high performance was um, basically categorized as achieving all your performance objectives in a one-year time frame. Okay, so that was the, the lens that we, that we used this. There were two common themes that continued to come up over and over in this elite 9%. The first theme is what we call self-awareness. So in addition to CCL's statement about how important it is for personal development and so forth and, and growth, we now have scientific you know, uh, and statistically validated information to validate self-awareness is absolutely crucial when it comes to communicating and performing in a high-performance manner. The second characteristic is what we call authenticity. So the more someone is being authentic to who they are and how they've been created, the more successful they're going to be. Now, so what that really means is this. If someone on the job has to be fundamentally someone different than who they are mm -hmm. naturally, then not only does that cause them stress, but because they're not being authentic, they're not in the sweet spot, they're not in their element, they're not in the zone. Okay, so what we find is that people who have the highest level of engagement, satisfaction, and performance are those who know who they are, they know what strengths they bring to the table, and because of that, they can make a better decision around a career, you know, an industry, a job that is better aligned with who they are. Okay, yep. so that's one of the, the keys. That's the foundation or platform for all personal development is self-awareness. Now, you talk about the issue, not an, it really an issue, but uh, I guess the mastery of versatility. Now, interestingly, I've helped train and coach and mentor and assess about a couple hundred thousand people over the last 25 years. And what I have done is I put together my own program that helps people to better identify how to recognize someone's diff different behavioral style or personality style and therefore how to build trust and rapport and build a really an emotional connection really quickly. So you have absolutely hit the nail on the head Kathleen when it comes to being versatile because what it really requires instead of doing what the vast majority of the people do which is they function on automatic pilot mm -hmm. meaning what they say and what they do is the same no matter how unique or how different the person is that they're talking to but really the essence of true success is being versatile is sizing up who the person is that they're talking to and as a result of that they'll know exactly what's important to them so let me give you one practical example and then we can move on or you can ask me some additional mm -hmm. questions. Mm -hmm. For someone who has a very high sense of urgency like myself, 99 out of 100, we're very impatient. Okay, Very impatient. We're already thinking about what we're supposed to be doing next while we're having the, you know, the, the current conversation. <laughs> and we have little time to enjoy where we are in the here and now because we're already thinking about you know, what we have to do. So to speak to us in any other manner than to be very specific, very succinct, and just to give us the 30,000 foot level without telling us how to build the watch, just tell us what time it is. Right. You've lost us, right? We're frustrated. We're, we're, our attention span is just, we're already, you know, the, we've, you, your time is, is basically gone. You've lost, you know, credibility with us. So there's just one quick example. <laughs> so that, that's, such a, that's such a great point because if you flip the coin, for an assistant or somebody who is a high S and a high C, which is who I am, I think John, we're like on the opposite side. But yet, right. I've also learned how to, you know, work with a lot of different people. I see that. I naturally will give you all the details about what's going on, and then I'll get to the point. But I also realize that when I'm talking with you, as let's say you and I, I'm the assistant and you're the agent or you're the top producer, I definitely need to get to the point. But how, how would you suggest the assistant, I mean, what, what would you suggest for an assistant, the languaging, to get more information and to have the top producer, the high um, urgency person, literally not stop, but slow down enough to give the assistant what they need? Because a lot of times what we're hearing from the assistants and from people who are in the back office is that, look, I do need a little bit more information because if I do it wrong, I'm going to get in trouble or they have a high sense of pride of ownership in their work that they don't want to do it wrong. 
They right. want they want to take care of their person. So right. as I'm going into more detail, you want to answer the question. That this is a great <laughs> example. Sure. <laughs> so so sure. I'll turn it back over to you. So bottom line, what would you suggest a, an assistant? Uh, how languaging that? How to do that? Well, the the primary three things that a high D, high sense of urgency person is looking for, um, first of all, has to do with ego, personal ego, not a surprise. Second of all, has to do with results, mm -hmm. okay? And um, let's talk about those two for a moment. So I'm going to be very, if I'm an admin, I'm going to be very specific to the high D that says this, look, I need these three remaining pieces of information and I need it by close of business today otherwise you don't get paid oh that's a good one <laughs> that's an well, eye-opener <laughs> you know so that's very specific because at the end of the day the best salespeople are highly economically motivated or you can say that this is gonna this is going to delay the closing or it's gonna delay you from getting compensated and I wanna make sure that you get everything that you need you know in a timely manner or that we get this done in a timely manner. So keep it very specific, but again, it's got to resonate, which I'm, which is why we're talking about mm -hmm. getting out of your comfort zone and realizing who the recipient is, who the listener is, and what they value. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, again, they're thinking about a million different things, conversations that they've had, what they have to do next, etc. But to get them to slow down for a second, say, look. In order for us to get this done, I need these three pieces of information, and I need it by so and so, or this is going to delay the whole process, which means you're not going to get paid in a timely manner. So then you're but, saying specific information by when, and this is what's going to happen if you don't. Exactly. So does that ever get? I mean, does that ever get old? Or you know, as I'm thinking and putting myself in that position, I'm thinking, how many times can I tell you, or you won't get paid, or we'll delay the closing? We feel like that's going over and over again, but I guess it's true. So I guess we just have to keep saying that. Well, hopefully, <laughs> as the as this team starts working more together, the high D, even though they're not naturally predisposed to provide you with all the information the first time and on time, they will start to get they will yeah. start to improve, and the, the the relationship will start to improve. Now, here's something very interesting. Today alone, I did two three one-on-one -on -one sessions, two with buyer agents and one with a new admin person. And what we did is we reviewed their assessment, we reviewed their style and how to best interact and communicate with different styles based on their style. So, and typically we'll have the leader sit in on the call mm -hmm. so that because the first 90 days are so crucial, yeah. I like to do this within the first week someone's hired. So I say, look, We've had over 100 people apply for this position or more. We picked you. We want to let you know specifically why we picked you. And it's not, it's not a matter of if you're going to be successful, but how successful you're going to be because your behavioral style, what you're motivated by, and most important of all, those things that you naturally, innately do really well are absolutely really tightly aligned with what the job requires. And then, so we affirm them, we encourage them, and we say, now this is what it's going to look like when you're talking to your leader who is a 99D <laughs> and a 75I and you're a 99C and a 79S. Here are the opportunities for, um, here are the opportunities for challenge. Here's what that's going to look like. Here's what it's going to sound like so that both of you can kind of take a step back and you can start to communicate with each other in, their, in, in you know, your style so that you can build that rapport because really when you think about it Kathleen you're smiling I'm sure you can give a whole host of <laughs> stories on this. the first 90 days is saying your prayers and taking your vitamins and hoping that you made the right decision on the hire and yeah. did the person is the person who showed up in the interview is it the same person that's showing up on the job every day okay yeah so, Instead of waiting 90 days and holding your breath you know, for that probationary period to elapse, right from the very first week, we're saying, you're the right person. We know it. Now yeah. you know it. And we provide each person with a one-page summary, including their leader, of how to best communicate with them, how to create the ideal work environment for them, what's important to them, and also what their strongest talents are. 
So that helps accelerate not only everyone's self-understanding, but also their understanding of who they're working with. So we yes. help to accelerate that gap of who are you, do I like you, do I trust you, you know, that sometimes takes six months to nine months before you're kind of comfortable to a point that, t that takes place very quickly where you've got a lot of those things out of the way and you're now moving on, you know, to, you know, developing that relationship. Right. That's wonderful. Yes, I have. Uh, I have lots of examples of how that goes well <laughs> and how that goes uh, off the rails. <clears throat> and because uh, I too, uh, in my mentor team consulting work, work with teams in their first ninety days and after. Sometimes also when they want to take their performance to the next level. And right. Same issues are sometimes at play because everyone still has their personality and brings their ego to work, uh, and and has certain habits. Um, and uh, you know, one of the things too that uh, I did myself as an assistant, and that I try to pass on to them now, is exactly what you presenced for them, which is number the things you have to talk to the driver about. Tell them you have three things, you have seven things, you have four things. I need eight minutes of your time. Give them a light at the end of the tunnel so that they don't want to hang themselves while they're talking to you. Because <laughs> how long is it taking, and how long is this going to be? And their head is already in the car, and um, and I, uh, I also wrote a little article and teach them about what I call zigzag communication, which is so that if the if your agent has uh, you know is is a moving target to be able to talk to, then then just follow them, follow them out to the car, walk down the hall with them. Don't expect to have a sit down meeting, because that's what the S and C, that analytical amiable personality, wants to stop and talk, and it's just not natural for a high-powered, high-producing real estate agent to stop. So if you can get them to stop for eight minutes, you know, that's really great. And uh, I like to use the example of um, before I started this company, I worked for uh, a coach that talks to 60 clients a week. So I had 11 seconds in between phone calls and two 30-minute breaks a day to speak to her. And we got a lot of stuff done, but I had to learn, and she's a driver, of course, so I had to learn to be able to get information quickly uh, and then take action and come back and clarify and so that is an effective way uh, for an amiable analytical at this point in time in my career I've also developed versatility just out of pain suffering and time you know to to try to get along with more people mm -hmm. so um, right. while my score is also higher my driver score is pretty high to be able to get things done and so learning as an assistant to to be more flexible in how you work with an agent does take some practice, does take some self-awareness, um, and uh, I think for you know for the teams to be effective, there is that um, acceptance and respect. In fact, um, it was those were the first two words that I wrote down as you were talking about that. That in in being able to relate to one another there is an acceptance about the fact that they're not going to talk like you. Mm -hmm. it, 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 you can't, you're not supposed to change that. There are ways to relate and build a bridge, um, you know, because one of the things I talk to the agents about in particular is uh, Ken Blanchard's One Minute Manager, is to be able to set goals, give praise, give correction, which they refer to as a reprimand, but for new people there are no reprimands, there are only correction and the agent has to be able to confront the fact that this is what I need, this is you know, the praise for doing it well because that you know, really works for every personality style. To be told that what you're doing works makes you want to do more of that. And then in the beginning, no matter what personality style you are, you also need correction. If you're not doing it the way your boss wants, then before a habit is developed, you need correction to be able to change that and then get feedback that you're doing it well. So would you talk a little bit about um, as you know in, in the agents and the, the high powered people that you work with, you know, talk to me a, a little talk to us a little bit about developing habits of how they can get across, you know, what they need to to their team. How they communicate, no matter what personality style there are, because not all top producers are also drivers. Right. Some are analyticals. Right. So, uh, 
we talk about habits. I use one of many tools that I use is the DISC profile, and I know it's almost a universal standard in the real estate industry, so we can talk kind of fluently about that. Um, I actually ask or recommend people to publish that right where they work, right outside their if it's a cube or their office, <laughs> as a as a visual reminder of who it is that they're going to speak with. Right. What their, I what like their, that. <laughs> what their style is. Now it's very simple. Now. You know, typically the work that I do is all everybody participates in this session where we're reviewing this diversity and the four different styles and how those people like to be communicated, how they think and process information, etc. So really, it has to do with um, you know talking about habits through frequency of just learning uh, something new and being in a safe environment to instead of operating on automatic pilot like we said before. Where you take a moment and you're deliberate and you're, you're 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 consciously saying, okay, who is this person? What do they value? What do they want from me? Now, let me just give you a quick a quick analogy. Most people realize what they really value on the rare occasion when they're a consumer and the salesperson gives it to them. In other words, think about it this way: those times that we're unbelievably satisfied and happy with the, the 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 buying experience that we've had it's because the we come away feeling wow that person really understands or understood who I am what's important to me and they communicated with me in a way that made me feel that they genuinely knew who I am as a person okay Mm -hmm. but that when you think about most communications and connections that people have that doesn't happen very often right. Right. Okay. So I like to think about, and this is a perfect segue into the realities of today's world. You know, a quick quote that 95% of senior leaders say that the quality of the customer experience, which is really at the end of the day, how the person comes away feeling, the quality of their experience, um, is the next competitive battleground. And here's the sad thing, 85% of the companies and organizations out there are merely training people on how to deal with difficult people or product or service knowledge. That's it. Mm -hmm. So if, as far as I'm concerned, the most important mm -hmm. area of self-mastery for anybody to, regardless of the role, except maybe if you're in IT and a, pro, a program or looking at a screen all day and don't have to interact with people. And please do because I don't want to interact with you because you don't have any people skills most of the time, right? That's where they need to be. Um, it's around understanding how to identify and recognize the diversity in people and then communicating with them in a way that really resonates and connects with them. And, and, and they come away thinking, wow, this person really understands who I am and what's important to me. And as a result of it, the communication time is often less. Um, the accuracy of everything is higher. The performance of everything is better. So one of the things that I ask the teams to do when they have their weekly meetings is to continue to reinforce the concepts that I have taught them by taking you know, one individual on the team and reviewing their personality style and talking about how they have experienced them and it helps to reinforce and helps people to remember not only their teammates but also how they need to be taking each conversation and communication as a separate entity versus just being a carbon copy. Mm -hmm. Nice. So get out of your comfort zone and, and focus on the other person. Okay. Well, you know, John, when we talk, when, um, before we got started, uh, we talked about having three to five tips for the people who are listening to this program. And I've, I've picked up several. I've been kind of jotting some down. And I just want to go through those because I know we're coming up on our time. Um, so we'll start to wrap up, but I'm hearing, you know, as a summary, you know, get to the bottom line for for top for the agents, for the people that you're working for, and uh, on the other side of that, it sounds like by doing that and asking that um, information, that the the agent is actually going to start learning what they need, so they're going to provide it ahead of time. So it's kind of getting those habits. So there's like a duality there, getting the bottom line. You're communicating in the same manner, and it kind of retrains that person as to what you're going to need so they can get paid. 
Right. The other thing is, is making sure there's a light at the end of the tunnel. I need these three things. I need eight minutes of your time. I have 11 seconds to get over here. <laughs> I love that. Um, and then also the zigzag. You're absolutely right, Kathleen, that, and it, follow them. I can remember doing that. I used to do that with my business partner who was like a, a 99 day. I'd follow him. Of course, yeah, I'd follow him out to the car. I'd follow, everything was in his trunk. Absolutely. So I like that zigzag approach. And publishing your numbers. I think it's a great idea. Being aware of it. It's not a secret. I mean, it's already not a secret because people already see that happening. But when you actually identify what that is, then they say, oh, that's what that is. And it's not personal. It's not like you're ignoring me. It's not like you disqualify what I have to say or the importance of the details. It's just that, oh, that's your operating style. This is my operating style. And how can we, you know, how can we blend that and cooperate? And that, you know, and that team communication, looking and seeing if you can do it in a safe environment where you're actually identifying different people as what their MO is and what their style is, great. Um, so those are some of the things that I'm taking away from what you're saying and the conversation that we're having. So I love that we're actually getting the, the, the tips on how to bridge, some of the, to bridge some of that, which really is not personal. And people do take it personally. It's not personal. It's just our MOs. Right. I think another tip, too, in most of the time I find that a lot of people miss the nonverbals and what I mean by the nonverbals is the person's body language. Mm. So if, if you have an agent come in and you, you know that they are rushed, they are hurried, they've got other things on their mind, talking to them at that instant is a lose-lose situation no matter what. Mm -hmm. So you have to realize at that point, okay, you got to pick your battles and pick your timing around when Okay, if that obviously wasn't the, the best window of time, even if it was for 60 seconds, to interrupt them, maybe you need to send them an email or a text that said, hey, you were really rushed. I didn't want to bother you at the time. didn't seem like, you know, and then say, here are three things I need from you today. But it wasn't going to be a good, you know, interaction, you know. Now, conversely, if the administrative person is under extreme stress one day because of incredible workload, then the sales, then the agent has got to also respect and understand that too. And a mm -hmm. lot of times, that's not even something that you that you pick up on from a verbal point of view. You can just see the stress that's, that they're wearing that's all over their face. Yes. Okay? Yeah. So it's not you know we need to be real we need to be authentic you know we need to be transparent in order for the best relationships and the best connections and the best teamwork to take place and so mm -hmm. oftentimes we you know we we really discard the nonverbals or the body language but the body language can tell us an, an, an incredible amount of information right so you know, don't already load up, uh, you know, something on somebody and give them something else to do when they're already redlining, right? Maybe you write it down and you email it to them at the end of the day or something, right? <laughs> but see, that's that's the kind of give and take and kind of the yeah. grace that, that the people in terms of communicating need to need to be able to have with with each other. And I love what you're saying about the grace and the understanding of where that other person is because when it works and you have that understanding, it can fly. And the production can go up because then the wheels don't break. You feel it's like you fill the tires and the wheels so you can really fly. Um, right. So yeah, definitely, I agree with you because that body language, absolutely, and we all ha we all wear it differently. But you get in tune with that person when you hire them or the first ninety days. You find that out, and those are some of the questions that you can actually implement in the first ninety days when you hire somebody new. Is how do you handle your stress? How will I know you're going to be under stress? You know, think, and that can go both ways because it is a, it is a collaborative effort. It is a team, so definitely. Well, right. I also want to say something about uh, this is an expression that Jolene taught me, which is the currency of appreciation. Mm -hmm. And it, this is really um, a, one of those tips or a part of the bridge that is um, something that is like a salve. <laughs> On, uh, on the relationships because it, when there is an expressed appreciation, it goes a long way mm -hmm. to help um, 
connect where there is conflict or I didn't understand or I didn't know that you wanted that, but to express the appreciation of thank you for taking care of that, thank you for giving me the information, uh, I really appreciate that you, you know, that you told me that or that you did that. That goes so far um, to helping people have patience and kindness for uh, uh, the lack of understanding that happens in the middle. Uh, and that I, I love the expression that currency, you know, because uh, sometimes for competitive uh, agents, they think they need to throw money at it. Yeah, which is wonderful. Money is wonderful, and 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 assistants appreciate that. But they they will go two weeks farther to have your back for a thank you, and I appreciate that, and that made a difference for me, uh, because particularly in the um, in the personality of the amiable. Uh, in particular, uh, and maybe even the expressive, but uh, for everyone as a human, that I that I appreciate you is the fuel to I have your back. And I hear agents say all the time, I need my staff to have my back. And so that is part of the currency that, for lack of another way, buys that a kind of attention. Uh, is that appreciation that that currency goes a long way uh, internationally? I would have to think. Mm -hmm. So let me just build on that because that is a phenomenal point, uh, one that gets far too little emphasis. So in, in addition to people having differences of personality style, they also have differences in terms of what they value and what they're looking to get out of work. Right. So for the top agent, it's financial gain and security, financial security, and it's, hey, look at me, aren't I, you know, I'm at this level. Right, it's it's they have that achievement drive to be the best that they can be, and they like the recognition. Right. Most of the time, not always, but most of the time, the admin person's drivers and motivators, what they value and want to get out of work, is much different. Okay. You know, the single best way that I can acknowledge an admin person, one of them, and I'll know this specifically again by their profile results. So I know that I'm not going to have a disconnect and have a risk of giving them something that's not going to connect with who they are as a person would be to say you've done such an exceptional job we had a tremendous and, and incredible workload over, over the last two weeks as a result of the time of year and just a lot of stuff that we have in the system I'm gonna give you Friday afternoon off and here's a hundred bucks to take your family to your, your choice of movie they will think that you walk on water yep why number one because most admin are, because they're a high S, they're very loyal, right, to family especially. Mm -hmm. They value family time. They value work-life balance. So for you to give them a half a day off and to give them some money or, you know, or do whatever they want to do with the money, maybe it's go out to eat. But the, the point of the matter is they're spending time with the people they love the most, right? It's like uh, Zig Ziglar, I heard him once say, he gave uh, tickets and a trip to one of his people that travels 300 days of the year. And she said, are you kidding me? I, that's what I do all year long. You're going to give me another you know, opportunity to travel. No, right? Uh -huh. So, you know, it's, it's again, you know, again, um, it's, it's really catering and personalizing your communication and how you treat somebody according to their style, according to what they value, and it makes all the difference in the world. Thank you. Yeah, so definitely. Thank you. That's so true. Well, Scott, I um, think we, we're, it's about time to wrap things up. John, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for the insight. Yes. For uh, As I'm, I'm sitting here, I'm coming up with more topics that we can talk about. We could be here for another hour because even generational <laughs> topics. It was like, sure. okay, that can be something too because different generations. But, you know, thank you so much for your insight. It really provided such a great um uh, uh, it's it's just valuable. Thank you very much, um, Scott. I'll turn it over to you. Yeah, I just want to say thanks to all three of you for <laughs> being on the hangout today. A lot of great information got out to the viewers, and for all of the viewers, thank you for watching. And be sure to check all three of these people out. Um, all of them are experts, as you can tell from what they talked about today. And join us again next month on another episode of the Bullseye Hiring Hangout. Yes, Thanks so thank much, guys. Thank you. Thanks, John. Kathleen, My pleasure. Scott. Take care Bye now. Bye-bye.